We have been on this series that we have entitled Jesus, Snapshots of the Savior. And so uh, we have reached the culmination of our first four message installment. Uh, we'll go to different subjects here in the following weeks, and then we'll revisit uh, and have our second four message installment. And then we'll, uh, we'll continue this pattern until we uh, look at 20 different messages, 20 different snapshots of the life of Jesus Christ. So are you with me in Luke chapter 16? Say amen if you're there, please. Amen. Thank you. All right. I want to make a statement to you this morning before we begin. And that is that nobody could go to heaven directly before Jesus died on the cross. No one could go to heaven directly before Jesus died on the cross. So it begs the question, where did the faithful the obedient, the God-fearing go, what place did they go to before Jesus appeared on the scene, died on the cross, and when he ascended to heaven, offered his blood as an eternal sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Because Hebrews chapter 9, if you remember with me, says without the shedding of blood, there is no what, church family? There's no forgiveness of sins. Jesus' blood had to be shed first before people's sins could actually be completely forgiven and pardoned and canceled and, and people could make their way to heaven. All right, well, we're going to take a look at this. We're going to answer that question, several others. All right, um, before we jump into the verse, I want to say, listen, Jesus, we have been looking at the fact that Part of Jesus, a huge part of Jesus' character, is that he is a God of truth. Amen. Aren't you thankful that he, we, don't, we don't serve a Savior that likes to shuck and jive and likes to deceive and, you know, speaks, speaks out of both ends of the mouth? No. He'll speak directly uh, to our hearts with God's truth. All right? So he's going to talk about, listen carefully, he's going to talk about how. And because Jesus talked about hell, we need to talk about hell. I don't care about the fact that it isn't popular anymore to talk about a place of eternal damnation. It is sad to me and it grieves me uh, so much. You know, just in my time of following Jesus from the early 80s till now, there were a lot more messages on hell preached back in the early 80s than there have been 40 years later. Can I get a witness in the house? Now, I'm not going to spit and spew and sputter and sweat and, you know, come up with all these crocodile tears to tell you, please don't go there. But I will speak the truth from God's word. Everybody OK? All right. Let's jump into verse 19. Notice, this is Jesus speaking. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Or in other words, he lived in luxury. <clears throat> but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate. Stop there. Two things that we need to take note of. Notice, this is not a parable. I hope I didn't say that up to this point. This is not a parable. This is a story. How do we know that? Because when Jesus spoke parables, he seldom uh, opened them up with, there was a certain man, and there was this other certain guy. And in parables, Jesus never mentions the name of any of his characters in the parable. Yet, in this one instance, he mentions the name of a person, which to me and to us should say that Jesus is talking about a real-life event here and not some story he is pulling out of thin air. Amen. Amen? So he's talking about a real rich man that lived and died during Jesus' time and a real poor person 
whose name was Lazarus. Verse 21, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell. This is a, the beggar. He was desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. Stop there. Very important to note, church family. Very important to note. Rich, the rich man did not die and go to hell because he was rich. The poor man did not die and go to paradise because he was poor. Who would agree with me that there are poor people that are going to go to hell? And it has nothing to do with their economic status. It has everything to do with the fact that they rejected Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And that's the only way to get to heaven. Amen. Only Jesus will get you to heaven. Your good works, your economic status, your social influences, no. Listen, you could be the greatest philanthropist of uh, all time. I've got to watch it because sometimes I get philanthropist and philanderer <laughs> mixed up. <laughs> I mean, I don't know there's a vast difference. A philanthropist is generous with his resources. A philanderer, well, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> They're generous, all right. Let's move on. Okay, uh, so we're in uh, verse, what verse are we in? Thank you. I was testing you. So it was that, so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Stop there. Notice, Jesus speaks of this place called what? Paradise. Paradise or? Abraham's bosom. Who said that? Thank you. Abraham's bosom. Why would Jesus refer to this place as Abraham's bosom? Well, who was Father Abraham? Wasn't he the father of the, of the faith, of the Jewish faith? Well, that's where Father Abraham is. And how many of y'all know that, that Abraham lived a life pleasing to the Lord? He obeyed God. He was a friend, the Bible calls him over and over, a friend of God. So how many of y'all know that God wants his friends to go to heaven eventually, but, but because Abraham couldn't make it to heaven directly, he went to this place that God created, listen carefully church family, called Abraham's bosom or paradise. Stop with me. Who remembers with me? I believe it's, a, it's gos uh, the Gospel of Luke where there, was, there were two thieves hanging on uh, one to the right of Jesus, one to the left of Jesus, right? And there was one over a period of hours who was convicted because initially they were both uh, mocking Jesus and they were both cursing Jesus. But over a period of time, one of the thieves began to soften up in their heart and God opened his spiritual eyes and saw Jesus for who he was. And he said, he said, Master, um, when you enter your kingdom, what two word? Remember me. Jesus said to, to him, today, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. He didn't say you'll be with me in heaven. No, paradise was the stopping place before people could go to heaven. For the righteous, for the wicked, there is a compartment called hell. Interesting so far, everybody? All right, let's read on. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades or in hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this place. So what's happening to the rich guy? He is being tormented. Right? Yes. Could he physically feel the heat of the flames? Yes. yes. 
Some people think, well, I'm not going to have a body, and so I don't think I'm going to fear being burned up in hell. Well, if you reject Jesus, listen, baby, you're going to have a spiritual body. The wicked get a spiritual body. The righteous get a spiritual body. The righteous will live with that spiritual body forever with Jesus. The wicked will, will suffer physical torment in that spiritual body forever without relief. Let's read on. All right, he said, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to do what? Dip the tip of his finger in water and cool this guy's tongue. All right, isn't that a fair request? This guy's in torment. Church family, listen to me. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, it says that the smoke of the unrighteous people's torment in hell will arise, listen carefully, forever and forever. What that says to me is that hell is not just a cessation of being. That's a popular teaching today. Well, people go to hell, well, it's called annihilationism. No, people are not annihilated, or, and they use the, 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 the scriptures in the Bible that say you will be destroyed, so they think of, of ceasing to exist, but that's not hell. You will live forever in hell. How do we know that? You know, if you're any bit into Bible prophecy, who remembers that before the thousand-year period, um, the Antichrist and Satan, no, or the Antichrist and the, the beast, the false prophet, are thrown into the lake of fire. And then you fast forward a thousand years later, they're still in the lake of fire, and they're still alive, and they're still suffering. So don't come peddling your little false doctrine that hell is only uh, just a, a nanosecond of time, and then you cease to exist. No. People live in torment forever. Shouldn't there be a sense of urgency, church family, for us to tell the truth to people out of love? Did not Jesus pay the price for them to not have to go to hell? Woe be to us if we do not preach the cross of Christ. They don't have to suffer. Now, if they reject, that's their choice. But when I stand before Jesus, I don't want their blood on my hands. Do you? Well, Pastor Joe, that's all you preach about. Jesus and the cross and Jesus and Lord and Savior. Is there any other thing to preach about? No. No. Let's move on. Sorry if I'm getting serious, church family. This cuts to the core of who I am. Notice verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. So could the people in hell go to the paradise part of hell? Oh. Could the people in paradise go to the hell part? Because there was a great gulf or chasm that was, notice, the care, notice carefully to the word, fixed. God fixed a place of separation between paradise and hell, and the person from hell could never go to paradise. The person from paradise could never go to hell. Right? So that guy, he was up a creek without a paddle, right? That rich guy? Let's read on. And beside all this, between you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, notice, l listen to the desperation, church family. Listen to the desperation. He said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. Send whom? Lazarus. 
For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Isn't it, an, isn't it interesting that how will make a person an evangelist? Funny how that rich guy, all he was concerned about in his lifetime was whom? Himself. And now, how woke him up, and now who is he really concerned about? His five brothers, right? So, man, I've got five brothers, and I don't want them to come here. Send Lazarus. Interesting, church family. Do you feel the flames in the pews? No. <laughs> How many of y'all are thankful for Jesus Amen. this morning? Listen, hey, baby, you can preach all about hell. I'm not going there. I punched my ticket to go to heaven 1982, April 1st at 8 p.m. in the evening. All right, let's move on. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. What was Moses and the prophets? Wasn't that the word of God to the Jews? Isn't that the Torah and the prophets? What's, what's Jesus saying? If they don't believe my word, they're not going to believe this cat that he was raised from the dead out of hell and he's telling you. Isn't that amazing, church family? A lot of people pray for experiences. You know, we should be praying for, church family, that the messages that are preached, that God will open their hearts, that God will open their ears, that God will convict them of sin, that they, their spiritual eyes would see Jesus in his glory, in his majesty, in all of his saving powers. Don't preach, don't pray for experiences. Pray that they would believe the word of God. No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if you do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded the one rise from the dead. How would Jesus talk about this experience with a real guy, a real rich man and a real beggar to scare us? Who believes that Jesus, that love beckons a warning to those, the objects of God's love? Because I love you, I'm going to warn you. Who's ever been driving down the road and you see a cop over on the side and you're driving speed limit and so you drive past him slowly, but then you drive past and you're beyond the cop and you see cars coming this way that are a little fast, and don't you flash the little... courtesy of uh, the Good Samaritan here. I do that. <laughs> Trust me, church family, I wish somebody had done that to me a couple times when I was pulled over and got a ticket. A hundred and fifty dollar ticket. I told you about the time we were, Cindy, my sister and I were driving from El Paso, Texas to Alamogordo, New Mexico, and my sister warned me. She said, Joe, as you approach Alamogordo, be on your guard because there's a lot of cops out. Oh, yeah, no big deal. Well, I'm driving this souped-up car. I told you about it. It is so... This car was psychotic. It was demon-possessed. <laughs> if a car could be demon-possessed, this was it. It was a Mazda SUV that was state-of-the-art. I'm telling you the truth. Listen, I'm not doctoring this up. You can ask Cindy. She'll tell you. Because there are such beautiful mountain ranges in that part of the country. I'd be like looking, I'd be like, look, Cindy, look at those beautiful mountain ranges. And then you hear a little voice, eyes on the road, eyes on, and then these, these little lights saying, keep your eyes on the road. I'm like, say what? <laughs> and then, you know, it was one of those cars that if you veer to the right a little bit or to the left, you beep, 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 beep. I mean, it just, it was so, and then I would set the cru cruise control past the speed limit and gave it about, if you give it about a minute, it would get you back down automatically to the speed limit. I thought, this car is a woman. 
Can I get a hearty amen from the men? Hey, no. No? <laughs> You'd be in trouble, right? <laughs> I was, I'm telling you what, I was so mad. So I took it off cruise control and I pressed it hard. And then as I'm driving about 80 on a 65, here comes the cop. <laughs> I mean, he, he rolled fast across the median and, and then came over and pulled me over. And he was a J-E-R-K. <laughs> he asked me to step out of my vehicle, stand with him while he wrote me the ticket next to his vehicle. And I said, sir, can you let me off the hook? No. <laughs> Fine, give me that ticket. <laughs> Ricky, lose my religion. <laughs> Listen, warning. That was a warning. My sister warned me the car. I'm going to call her. <laughs> what should I name that car? Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy was warning me. And I did not. Uh, anyway, the point is, church family, listen carefully. Listen, I'm, I want to finish with this. A couple of things. Number one. Let's warn people lovingly. Accepting Jesus is all about a loving, living relationship for eternity. But listen carefully. It is also about being saved from the punishment, eternal punishment for all of our sins. People need to know that. I'm thankful that when I was young, there was a guy who told me about hell. Because I used to have this idea that I was going to go to hell and party with my friends. Huh. <laughs> Boy, was I in the dark about hell. I'm thankful that somebody told me the truth. Right? Second thing, let's talk about the righteous. What happened to the righteous when Jesus died? When Jesus ascended? from earth to heaven. Ephesians 4 says he took all those uh, righteous people with him to heaven. That when Jesus went to hell, he preached the gospel to the Old Testament saints. They accepted Christ. Why do you think that John the Baptist was killed before Jesus? He was still a forerunner to those saints in paradise to say, the Savior's coming. And he took them all to heaven. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 5, please. Last scripture. Therefore, Hal hath, en hath enlarged herself. Stop there. How could Hal have enlarged itself when Jesus emptied it out of all the righteous Old Testament saints? Let's pray. Father, this is not a pleasant message to preach. It is not a pleasant message to hear. But Father, we believe in, with all of our hearts that this is your word. This is your message. Thank you, Lord God, for the hope that we share here at Locust Grove Church. Jesus being our Lord and Savior. But Father, if there is any here within the sound of my voice, through the radio, through YouTube, that has never stopped and repented of their sins and asked for forgiveness and asked Jesus to save their lives and to change their lives for the better, Lord. I pray that by your precious Holy Spirit, you would do that. Father, may they accept Jesus, avoid hell, and go to heaven and enjoy heaven forever with our Savior. It is in his name we pray. Amen.